Welcome to Tuesday Talks with the Green Bay Doulas. I'm Emily Jacobson. I am here with the amazing Antoinette, who is a birth and postpartum doula here at Green Bay Doulas. And it is February, so it's Black History Month. Nice. I figured it shouldn't be me talking about Black History Month, <laughs> to be honest. Um, because, you know, as much as I have always loved history and culture and, like, sure. civil rights and things like that... Um, I, I wanted to come from somebody who, who can really speak to it. Oh, and so definitely. I appreciate you coming in today. So we have been researching, and I don't know if you've noticed, every Sunday this um, month we're going to be posting something about Black History Month, but more importantly about like black women who have changed um, the world of medical system, um, 10 amazing mothers that we need to know about that are black. Sure. And so there's one we really want to focus on, and that's why we want to do this Tuesday talk talks, and we want to talk about Natalia Tanner and Dr. Natalia Tanner. Yes. So tell me about her. Amazing person. So Emily, I was kind of, like you said, we was doing some research, and um, she was the first... Um, pretty much African-American woman um, in pediatrics associated with both black-owned and operated hospitals as well as uh, majority institutions throughout her career, which I thought was amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, they don't really uh, kind of talk about that. So she was born in Jackson, Mississippi, and she did she did have both her parents, which was Doris and Joseph Tanner, of course. Um, they did move, her parents did move to Chicago when she was little. They did discuss that as well. Okay. That's something else I had seen, but I found to be really amazing. Um, she, in 1952, Dr. Tanner had joined um, the Staff Children's Hospital in Michigan. Okay. So that's throughout, in, in Detroit, Detroit, Michigan. But at that time, it was still segregated. Okay. So I can only imagine what that probably could have been like. Yeah. Um, first woman black doctor and still under segregation in a hospital. Not, let alone there wasn't like segregated colleges at that time for medical students either. So being one, a woman, but Most on top definitely. of it, a black woman in medical school going into pediatrics. Most definitely. What a challenging. Trail trailblazer. Definitely. Definitely. Um, I think um, it also did mention that Dr. Tanner um, did remain in private practice into her 70s. Wow. So that means that she was practicing medicine for quite some time. Yeah. And it was um, an issue that, not an issue, but they were saying that she focused more with younger black women that was like in poverty pretty much sure. that kind of struggled with that and struggled with childbirth as well. Uh, what else did they get into? So Dr. Tanner received numerous awards throughout her career, including the Outstanding Achievement Award in Adolescent Medicine by Society for Adolescent Medicine in 2001. All right. So we already yeah. know when it comes to the adolescent and then the medicine and try to treat that. As we all know that with black, when it comes to the black women within our culture, we are pretty much stigmatized upon us having struggles um, with mortality rate. And yeah. I've, um, I'm struggling with that myself. We'll get off into that, in the, you know, later in the in the weeks. Mm -hmm. But but the fact that, that she took on she took on that responsibility, responsibility. to help us mm -hmm. with that, you know, because it's such a big struggle. A lot of women are scared right now today, black women, and mm -hmm. thinking that they'll probably die if they have children, which is not the case. I would myself would want to be more educated on how to present that to black women that I ever may come across and work with and make them feel like they will be safe during childbirth, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Absolutely. Okay. Just wanted to see if I was kind of, if people, if I would be like being followed. Yeah. Okay. Um, but that's what I wanted to share with you guys. But it also did mention, like I had said before, with her being in the segregated hospitals, um, at that time when she went to the Children's Hospital in Michigan, um, she wasn't readily gained acceptance right away, right. which I'm pretty sure that that was an issue for mm -hmm. her. So I'm pretty sure gaining that mental capacity to try to keep that all balanced, but she still came out to be yeah. successful. And then um, just doctor. imagine like what she worked through, because when was she born? She was born in 1922, and oh, wow. she was, passed yeah. away in 2018. So imagine what she saw in her lifespan of like Imagine civil rights that. movement oh, yeah, and, and the desegregation of the hospitals and and having the hospitals come together and then amazing. I mean I can't imagine what this amazing. woman like her struggles but also most her definitely. victories oh most definitely and that's why we want to talk about her is we want to celebrate her victories most definitely um, she she is somebody one who's from the Midwest here I mean she has seen it all put her whole career into the Detroit area yes yeah, she and, did and we're going to highlight her a little bit more later but um 
you know, we think that it's really important to talk about Dr. Tanner because she made some significant advances in pediatrics yes, she did. for families and, and women of color and, and their children. Yep, I, and I would agree with you with that because even coming up myself, Emily, I wasn't, you know, when you have children young, you wasn't taught the proper um, way to actually bear raise children when you have them mm -hmm. so it's like we need women like dr tanner in place like mm -hmm. she was in place to kind of give us that um the encouragement we need to keep going what would it be like for you to have black pediatricians here in green bay i think it would be amazing i oh, i would get do off we even have it no no we don't I, we have a podiatrist that's black they mm -hmm. um he um i actually seen him they, he's over by St. Mary's Hospital. He's okay. from Chicago, but he only specializes in skin. Sure. So he doesn't, yeah. especially he's not a doctor, so, but yes. So, you know, that's something too. Like, yeah. I would never think that that, you know, that just shows that, like, we have so much to learn. Yeah, we do. And, <laughs> Me and too. Me Green too. Bay's working on it. We're getting there. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, I just wanted to open this up for conversation, like, I'm what would that did. look like? And and these are the women who are trailblazing. And this is why we celebrate um, Black History Month in February is to gain awareness of, of things that maybe we shy away from because we don't want to talk about it. Maybe For sure. I don't want somebody to think that, you know, being like, well, who am I to talk about it as a white woman? Exactly. Um, you know, but I think we have to start having these conversations. I and agree. That's only going to break it down. So. Oh, yes, I agree. Cool. Anything else that we need to know about her? Know that Before she was go? an amazing woman and that Absolutely. she made sure that our uterus stayed intact. No, that was just a side joke, guys. <laughs> she was an amazing woman. And I am very appreciative of the information that she shared with us and until her, you know, ending that she left us. But I'm glad that I was able to learn what I learned about her and information because, honestly, I didn't know until we actually started researching and kind of get more information, which I'm glad I did. When you know better, you do better. Yes, ma'am. Right. Yes, All right, that's what we've got for Tuesday Talks. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.